So I'm going to walk you through the super resolution enhancement tool in Photoshop that's going to increase the res of an image four times over. So let's get right into it. So to begin with, there is limitations in respects to what images you can use. It's not just a case you can pull out any image from your uh, your photo library and try this too. Uh, Adobe recommends there's certain types of images and they really have to be raw files. So these are raw files that are based upon a camera that's using the Bayer or X-Trans uh, sensors, which is generally most of the range, but there are some types of files um, that won't be suitable for, for this effect, uh, namely JPEGs and TIFFs, uh, DNG files aren't going to work, any images that come from a Foveon sensor, um, the Fuji cameras that are using an older mosaic sensor, um, Canon cameras where you're shooting in RAW but it's a small or medium sized RAW because I know they're choosable so it has to be a large RAW file. Uh, same again with Nikons and um, with if you're using a Pentax pixel shift resolution as a PSR file it won't work here uh, nor will it on an ARQ from a Sony. So there's a few limitations but generally speaking if you're sticking to uh, a Sony and Nikon a, camera, a, a Canon camera, a Fuji camera, all with the latest sensors and you're using the highest resolution option in your camera, um, then this is going to work. So all you need to do, once you've got that file, you're opening it up in Camera Raw. Now again, you need to have the latest version of Photoshop or at least version 13.2 or later. So I've made a couple of adjustments to this image but only really in terms of colour and I've just tried to kind of cover up a, a few little bits of dust that I had on the sensor but they're just kind of minor things anyway because this is all about the actual resolution of the image. Once you've got your image looking how you want it basically all you need to do is right click and then press enhance and you'll get this simple little window with only two choices either raw details and super resolution make sure you click both it may take a couple of minutes it may take a couple of seconds to actually do this enhancement and um, it just depends upon your actual computer speed but you see the little dial in the corner here telling you that it's going to take a, a minute or so and then you also get an estimated completion time so basically once you're done uh, just press enhance down in the bottom corner here you'll also see that processing you can do multiple images at the same time if you've got quite a few to do but just for this purpose obviously i'm only going to show you one so you can click on it and it gives you an idea as to that it's still in processing stage so what we'll do we'll just skip to the bit when it's done Okay, there we go. It actually wasn't as long as it was predicting, but what has happened now is we've got two images on our thumb, st thumb strip at the bottom here. We've got our original and then we've got our enhanced version. And it tells you that at the top in the file name so you know which one is which. So it outputs it as a DNG file. Now all I need to do is just holding down the shift key. I'm going to select both of them and then press open. So fortunately with it uh, naming them differently, it's going to make it a lot easier to actually know which one's which. But to show you the actual detail and, and how good it is, we're going to layer these two images together. So let's bring them on screen. Now what we're going to do, let's get our layers panel on screen here. We're actually going to make our original version, which is this here twice as large because effectively we have made the image twice as large on the enhancement so twice across the top twice across the vertical uh, which ultimately makes it four times bigger so to do so i'm going to go to image so this is on our original version i'm going to change the percentage so if you're ever on pixels just change to percent if you want to make this comparison i'm going to make it 200 percent so now we've got a much larger version of our file, but all we need to do is make it a bit smaller and drag it on top of our super enhanced version, and then we can get rid of it. Um, on our layers panel, just to make it clear, let's call this one super res and the top one original, just so we can see the difference. Now, this is a fun part. So let's make it bigger. Let's go really, really close in here now. So let's use the top of the tower to kind of really see how this resolution is done. And it's not going to change and it's not going to make everything super sharp if it's super blurry. You still need to have a decent image to begin with, but this is going to be fantastic if you want to print images larger than naturally what the original output uh, raw file would have allowed. So this is our original. So let's maybe just kind of use the edge of this tower as a little bit of a reference here. So that's the original. And if we click off, now you can see the super high res. So it has given us a little bit more gray and a little bit more noise, but it's given us detail. That's the most important thing. It's given us detail. So go back to the original 
and then the high res. So let's try that somewhere else. Let's go and have a look maybe down in a Docker area. Um, let's see. Yeah, actually made it down by this boat here. Okay, so we're just looking at that boat and okay, that's the original and that's the high res. So you can see even in the background along the, um, the side of the river here, there's loads more detail, a lot more perceived sharpness. Now obviously we're looking at it 200% in, which wouldn't be natural. We'd normally be looking at it just at 100% level. So maybe just kind of go back a little bit and you can still see there is a really great enhancement of detail there. Now again, I'm saying this is not going to save a photograph if it's soft or if it's blurred. It's not going to make it sharp. It's just enhancing the resolution on a good image, really. So you do need to still make sure that all your details are in there correctly. Your exposure is as well balanced as possible. But it, it does allow you now to kind of print that image a lot larger than it natively would be. So this is going to be fantastic for photographers that sell prints uh, and kind of make money out of it that way. But it's a fantastic tool. As I say, make sure you've got the latest version of Camera Raw, that's 13.2, and obviously make sure that you're sticking to Adobe's requirements of the right type of image files. But there you go. Hopefully that's a really helpful tip for photographers using raw files in Photoshop. Keep looking out for iPhotography for more. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching.